Tonight is deliverance night. And when you go through the scriptures, you discover that all those who got deliverance from the Lord Jesus Christ started by worshiping him. So I'm going to give you five minutes on your own to worship God the way you want. You want to sing, you want to clap, you want to shout. You... Five minutes. Go ahead and worship the Lord of hosts. Worship the one who has never lost a war. The one who had never failed. The one who will never fail. Worship him. Adore him. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him adoration. Oh Lord, thank you. Thank you. Glorifies her name like never before. Oh, thank you, God.
Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty God, we have worshipped. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you are the Father and our God, the unchangeable changer, the one who has never lost a war, the one who said, Let there be light, and there was light. We worship you, we magnify your holy name, accept our worship in Jesus' name. Tonight, in the lives of all your children, demonstrate your almightiness. <laughs> Defeat every adversary tonight. <laughs> Silence every foe tonight. Glorify your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let somebody shout hallelujah. That's better. Tonight, the Almighty God wants to set some people free. And believe it or not, you might be one of the people. You see, when we talk of deliverance, many of us always think, oh, deliverance is for somebody who is possessed by the devil. <laughs> Possession is the final stage 
of the activity of Satan in a man's life. I don't have time for a long Bible study tonight. I would have talked to you about seven stages of the activities of Satan. We would have talked about things like oppression, regression, repression, obsession. I upset as I tell you, before we finally come to obsession. Obsession is I mean possession is when the enemy has already taken over completely. But that's the last bit. What God wants me to tell you very, very briefly, I'll be very brief tonight because tonight <laughs> as we used to say when I was young, we shall see what we shall see. Every day begins with a night. It is we human beings, we human beings who begin our day from the morning. That's not the way God does his own reckoning. If you read Genesis chapter 1, and you read verses 5, 8, 13, and so on. You will hear God say, and the evening and the morning the first day, and the evening and the morning the second day, and the evening and the morning the third day. As far as God is concerned, Every day begins at night. In Genesis chapter 1, the same Genesis chapter 1, if you read it from verse 1 to 3, you will discover that before light came, darkness came first. God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. That was before God said, let there be light. And there was light. Darkness came first. When the Bible says the, 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 the world, the earth was without form, you know what, does it, that, what that means? It means the earth was confused. It was out of order. Confusion always comes before order. Storms always come before calmness. Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41. Mark 4, 35 to 41. You remember, the Lord was sleeping and there was a big storm. Until they woke him up and he spoke and said, Peace be still. Are you in a storm tonight? In the name that's above every other name, I say, peace be still. Every testimony begins with a problem. The bigger the problem, 
the bigger the testimony. Every every testimony. If you if you have not shared a testimony in the past three years, it's because we've never had a crisis. Every testimony begins with a crisis. There was a testimony somebody shared yesterday. You know some of these testimonies. I had to tell myself, sit down, sit down. You are the general overseer. When I hear some of these testimonies, I, 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 I felt like jumping up and shouting hallelujah. She told you of a baby, a baby so sick that five doctors rejected the boy. They said the boy was going to die. They wouldn't even treat him. They said his case was hopeless. Then the Almighty God stepped in. Let somebody shout hallelujah. The bigger the problem, the bigger the crisis, the bigger the testimony. For example, in John chapter 11, you can read it from verse 1 to the end, John 11. Lazarus was sick. They sent to Jesus Christ. Your friend, the one you love, he is sick. The Bible said, he said, oh, don't worry, the sickness not unto death. It's for the glory of God. And he stayed where he was. Until the man was dead and buried four days. Hmm. Then he said, Now let's go and wake him up. Ah. And then my father strolled in. And the sister said, Oh, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. Oh, he wanted to show them that is the resurrection and the life. He spoke a word, and tomorrow he'll be speaking. When the people saw the man who had been dead for four days jumping out of the grave, nobody could doubt him anymore. Have you a problem? And you are here tonight? Ha! Let me hear you shout hallelujah. He said, when the problem is small and you testify, people will say, sit down, let's hear something good. Uh, last week, I had a headache. I prayed. Jesus healed me. Ah. <laughs> sit down. But when somebody was covered in fire and the dress he wore refused to burn. Some of you don't, you, you don't know when to shout. You, you don't know when to shout at him. When the, when when the dress refused to burn because it was a dress he wore one night 
Many of you will remember that night when God said, The dress you are wearing from now on is anointed. And oh God Almighty. And dress refused to burn. Because God spoke. I'm not saying Daddy asked me to repeat that now. I'm just using my position as someone who is sanctified to decree that the dress we are wearing now is sanctified. Uh, Jesus had raised the dead before. <laughs> he raised the daughter of Jairus. But the people said, well, nothing really happened. Uh, maybe the girl just fainted. I mean, you, you heard him himself. He, when he came, he said, she's sleeping. You know, she, he just came in when the girl wanted to wake up. And then he raised the dead, the son of Nain, of the widow of Nain. When this one, they were, they were already going to bury him. And the people said, uh, well, not really a miracle. The boy was in a coma. And so as they were taking him to the burial ground, fresh air blew on him. It was just when he was about to come back to life that Jesus came. It's coincidence. That's why when they told him Lazarus was sick, he said, this one, eh? <laughs> it won't be somebody who fainted. He would have been buried. He would already be stinking. Then I will bring him back to life then people will know that it is the resurrection and the life who is living among them. I have good news for somebody here tonight. Your problem is so big, you, you can't even think of how it can be solved. You get the solution tonight. In 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 1 to 7, 2 Kings 4, from verse 1 to 7, when that widow of one of the sons of the prophets was bankrupt, and the creditors came and there was nothing they could sell in the house except his children. That was how poor she was. And my father moved in. Within a day, he paid all her debt and had enough left over so that she would never need anybody's money for the rest of her life. As the testimony began with a big problem. May I inform somebody here tonight? Financially, your situation is critical. <laughs> Next year convention, you will stand on this altar and tell the world, that you have more than sufficient. In Mark chapter 5, from verse 2 to 15, I'm just giving you some examples of the bigger the problem, the bigger the testimony. Mark 5, 
two to fifty. The madman there was, he, he didn't have just one demon. Not seven, not ten, not hundred. A legion. He was so mad, mad people called him mad. When my father spoke a word and all the demons scattered, when the entire country came and they saw the madman in his right mind wearing clothes, the Bible said they were afraid. There are testimonies that will frighten people I told you on Tuesday that if we praise him together as one, our God will bless us so that the whole world will be afraid of him. They shout hallelujah. I can give you practical illustrations, but I don't have time to tell stories tonight because God wants to do something and He's in a hurry to do it. Every day begins with a night, every testimony begins with a crisis. It is when night refuses to change today. That's when you need to call on heaven to come and intervene. So that you have a problem. Hey, that's no problem. That's the beginning of a testimony. But when the problem refuses to move when night refuses to change to day. When by the time it is 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m., and still everything is still dark, ah, then. We need to call heaven to intervene. Mark chapter 5, from verse 25 to 34. Mark 5, 25 to 34. The woman with the issue of blood went to one doctor. That one referred her to a second doctor. That one referred her to a third doctor. That one referred her to a fourth when she has spent all she had and instead of getting better got worse ah. that's when he said <laughs> heaven you have to intervene oh. that's why the, the message of tonight is not for everybody It's for those of us who know we have a, we have a mountain. We have commanded the mountain to move. It didn't move. We have fasted. We have prayed. We have invited pastor to pray. Pastor has prayed. Some of us have written to the general overseer. He had prayed. And the problem is see there. Ah. Tonight is your night. Yeah. 
Every day begins with a night. The night is supposed to change to day. Sorrow is supposed to change to joy. Weeping may endure for a night. Joy comes in the morning. And when weeping says it's not going to change to joy, then we have to call on heaven. Because tonight we are talking about the land of the endless day. That's heaven. I'm sure you would then say, well, you say, where do you find that in the Bible? Well, of course you know. <laughs> Revelation chapter 22, verse 5. Revelation 22, verse 5 says, there's no night there. No night there means if your problem started in the night and the night changes to day, uh, does it mean that the day would then go to another night? before we can have another day. That should be the normal circle. But the place we are talking about called heaven, once it is day, it is day forever. Imagine you for the rest of your life. Having no more night experience. <laughs> just day. I mean, just come along with me. You, you know, you want to celebrate something. Maybe your birthday or something pleasant and you prepare for the day a lot of noise a lot of invitation a lot of expectation you're looking for the day then the day comes oh thank you daddy My daddy asked me to tell somebody, your day comes tonight. <laughs> oh, Lord. So the day comes. Woke up in the morning, and everybody is singing, happy birthday to you. And, and, Head is swelling. You are, everybody focusing on you. You're the center of attraction. And before you knew it, the day is over. Uh, and you know, on, on a day like that, <laughs> time flies. And before you need the seven, I change to eight, I change to uh, wait. They, they will say, I have to go. Imagine how beautiful it would be if your day never becomes night. Imagine how wonderful it would be. Imagine how wonderful it would be if it is just joy all the time. May I decree to somebody in the mighty name of Jesus, from tonight onward, 
no more sorrow for you. You see, the word of God says, Thank you, my father. The Lord asked me to tell somebody. He said, the saying that not every day is Christmas will no longer apply to you. I'm sure you understand that one. <laughs> I mean, when you go out abroad, I know one big store in London, when it is 100 days to Christmas, they begin to advertise it. 100 days to Christmas, tomorrow, 99 days to Christmas, because everybody's looking forward to at least one day in the year when they can have joy. And before you knew it, Christmas has come and gone. It is in an attempt to hold on to that one day that they say, hey, December 26 also, eh, public holiday. And the Almighty God says, there's someone here for the rest of your life. Every day will be like Christmas. The Almighty God can allow your money to last for 1,000 years. Is there in the Word of God, Psalm 90 verse 4? Psalm 90 verse 4. And so as far as God is concerned, a thousand years could be just like yesterday. Imagine that in your family, and I'm claiming this for myself too. Imagine in your family that there be no premature death for 1,000 years. <laughs> ah, you say, uh -uh. you mean that suddenly we have a family where people don't die? No premature death. And the, 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 the Bible says in his word, he says in his word, in Isaiah 65, verse 20, Isaiah 65, verse 20, he said, it is possible that when somebody dies and he's a hundred years old, they will call him an infant. In other words, nobody will die young. I claim that for my own family. And I decree it to your family. So what God wants to do tonight is to turn your night today. And that crisis that had resisted prayers, that problem that you have fasted about, prayed about, uh, invited pastor to pray about. Some of, some of you have gone from one prayer mountain to another prayer mountain. And some prophets, quote and unquote, have been eating fat 
on you because of a problem that refused to be solved. In the name of the one who sent me, tonight you will get deliverance. Only one condition. There must be no trace of cooperation between you and forces of darkness. Because if God wants to deliver you and one of your you are one leg in God one leg in Satan <laughs> you have to choose choose you this day who you will serve In Numbers 23, from verse 19 to 24, Numbers 23, 19 to 24, a king invited a false prophet to come and curse Israel so that they can be weakened and be destroyed. The prophet came. As he opened his mouth to curse, blessings began to flow. The king got angry. I asked you to come and curse these people. You are blessing them, he said. <laughs> How can I curse those whom God had not caused? He said, God has not seen any iniquity in these people. He has examined them up and down. You know, I was telling, I was talking to you on Tuesday. I said, be as pure as light. Some of you would say, hey, you are taking that too far. Ah. That's why Jesus Christ said you must be without spot, without blemish, without any such things. Be clean, inside out. He said, I can't cause them. God has not seen anything evil in them. I told you the story before, just for illustration. The woman who came and said she had been barren for so many years, somebody told her, go to Pastor Adipo, he prays for you, you will become pregnant. You've seen so many testimonies about children being born, wait till tomorrow. And you will see all the people who were barren last year, who have got their children to, you will see them to mock. I guarantee you they will be in hundreds. Special anointing by the grace of God, because God knows I love children. Ooh. If my wife had no problem giving birth, we would have had a dozen. I, I, I love children. So the one my wife could not produce, other, other women are producing them. <laughs> Glory be to God. She came, we prayed. Following year, she returned. I'm not yet pregnant. 
They told me that if I came and you will pray for me, I will be slain in the street, I will fall down. You prayed, I fell down, etc., etc. I don't fall down anymore now. We are able to control the anointing a little. What's wrong? And God spoke to me and said, Ask her. How many boyfriends beside her husband? You know the story now. If I didn't know the voice of God, how do you say to a very big lady, how many girlfriends have how many boyfriends have you? I had to smart kind of stammer. Uh, sister, please don't 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 be angry. Uh, <laughs> It's not me, but it's my daddy who said I should ask you. How many boyfriends have you beside your husband? She says six. I thought you know the story. <laughs> you have six boyfriends apart from your husband? And you want my God? My God is a holy God. You want deliverance tonight? You want to be completely free? You want your night to change to day? You want your sorrow to change to joy? You want that mountain to move? You must make up your mind. purity absolute holiness that's what God requires it's like I told you on Tuesday it's not my standard when people say your standard is too high you are making the, the, the journey to heaven so difficult it's not me The God we serve is as pure as light. And he said, your Ethereum must be perfect, even as he is perfect. As soon as we settle the issue of sin, then you need to take note. How do we proceed? To get the de deliverance tonight. Two simple steps. Step number one. We will praise him. Step number two. We will come against forces of darkness. In the name that is above every other name. Like I told you at the beginning, all those who got deliverance, they got it by worshiping God first. The madman of Gadara couldn't talk. The demons won't allow him to talk. But as soon as he saw Jesus Christ coming, he worshiped. From that moment on, he got the lot of us committed. Oh, we have been worshiping. Yeah. The one we are going to do tonight. The devil is a liar. Don't pay attention at all. Even if there's a crisis, it's going to lead to a testimony. <laughs> so now we are going to worship God. And you know, when it comes to deliverance, <laughs> it's not a question of uh, I'm a big man. 
The devil doesn't know big men. No, 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 no. Casa has no respect for your degrees. It doesn't matter how many PhD you have. When it is time to worship God tonight, we are going to do it like little babies. Because if a madman could worship God, what's your excuse for not worshiping? Then we will come against these forces of darkness in the name that's above every other name. When David came face to face with Goliath, he said, I come against you in the name of the Lord. We will see what God will do. And I'm sure by tomorrow morning, everybody will be singing a new song. So I want to get out of the way so God can do what he wants to do. I'm going to give those of you who have not surrendered your life to Jesus Christ a few minutes. I will count from 1 to 20, knowing that some of you are very far away. And you better hurry up, because the rest of us, we have an assignment with heaven tonight. So I'm calling. If you want to give your life to Jesus, you really, really mean it. You want the Almighty God to save your soul, wash you whiter than snow. You want the kind of salvation that will never again have anything to do with the devil. I will count from 1 to 20. Come now before I say 20. One. Two. Three. Twelve. 
13. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Okay, those of you who have already come forward, and those of you on the way, keep coming. But begin to pray now. Ask Jesus to have mercy on you. Ask him to save your soul. Ask him to wash you clean, to wash away all your sins. Promise him that from now on you'll be serving him all the days of your life. It will have nothing more to do with the devil. Go ahead, talk to him. And the rest of us, please, let's stretch our hands towards these, our new brothers and sisters, and intercede for them. That the one who saved our souls, we save their own souls also. Pray for them. Intercede for them. Let's do that for at least three minutes. And those of you who are still on the way, make sure you get to the front before the three minutes is over. Cry to God. Ask him to save your soul. Ask him to have mercy on you. Wash you clean. Promise him you will serve him. Wholeheartedly. For the rest of your life. Brethren, let's intercede. Let's really intercede for them. Pray that God will give them genuine salvation. A kind of salvation that will make them brand new creatures. That all those things will be gone. And everything will become new for them. Those of you who are still on the way, hurry up. I have only one more minute for you to get to the front. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father.
In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. My Father, my God, I want to thank you once again for your word. Thank you for speaking to us. And thank you for these people who have surrendered their lives to you tonight. Please receive them. Amen. Have mercy on them. Amen. Let your blood wash them clean. Amen. Save their souls. Amen. Receive them into the family of God. Amen. Write their names in the book of life. And for the rest of their life, let them serve you. And Father, I pray that whenever they cry unto you from now on, you will answer them by fire. Don't let them ever backslide. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, uh, uh, the counselors will attend to you and they have to do it very, very quickly because we need the front of the altar. So they will give you a card which you will fill. We do that very quickly. Uh, and as soon as they have attended to you, then you can go back to your seat. In the meantime, I think uh, the band can begin to worship God even as we prepare for what we follow. Okay, quickly. Ushers, please move fast.
The Bible tells us in Joshua chapter 6, verse 20. He said, The children of Israel shouted. And when they did with a great shout, the wall came down. The first thing we are going to do is that each and every one of us would think of a song of your own. You will sing your own song to God. You will clap. If you want to dance, you will dance. The trumpeter will blow their trumpet. The organist will play. We will combine all this. And it will become a joyful noise to the Lord. Remember, we are not joking tonight. Some of us are tired of a night that refused to become day. We are tired of a problem that refused to go. Am I correct? So I will sing my song. You will sing your song. The organist will play his organ. I can clap, I can... Now, take note, when you begin to do this, there might be one or two people near you who will say, ah, take it easy. Remember, that's what they said to Bartimaeus. They told him to take it easy. If he had listened to them, his night would have endured forever. That's the first thing we are going to do. After that, we're going to sing a war song and then leave the rest to God. Have you thought of your own song? Please stand if you can. And just go ahead, sing unto God. Clap unto Him. Dance before Him. Do, do whatever you can.
Oh, thank you, Lord. And now, it's a very simple song. The simplest is, in Jesus' name, every knee must bow. And when you are singing that song, as a warrior, you put in your mind, you focus your mind on that mountain that had refused to move. You will be saying, you be singing that song in your spirit. You know the knee that must bow tonight. For five minutes, we will sing that song like warriors. Warriors are not gentlemen at the battlefront. When the battle is over, we can be ladies and gentlemen again. Now, so over to you, brethren. We go ahead and we go fast. In Jesus' name, everything is done. Jesus' name, everything is done. In Jesus' name, everything is done.
Hallelujah. I want us to sing one more world song. It's a song you know very well. Jesus power, super power. Jesus power, super power. Now you don't sing it gently, you sing it because we want the devil to know tonight that power passes power. Go ahead. In the name of the Lord of hosts, I decree your deliverance tonight. Your night will become morning today. That crisis in your life will end tonight. Yeah. 
Before the sun rises tomorrow, you will testify. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I had to stop you because the move of God is already so powerful. Some people are beginning to manifest and the crowd is such that we don't have room. But I want you to go back home tonight praising God because by tomorrow morning you will know that the wall of Jericho in your life has fallen. <laughs>